welcome back everybody. I just set the preconditioning for the uh, battery. How you do that is you go into the Tesla app and schedule your departure. So one thing, it already turned on the inside HVAC and, and warmed it up to the temperature I had it set at. But I wanted to let you hear the motors preconditioning the battery. Take a listen. <laughs> All right, we've been preconditioning for about 15 minutes. I'm a little worried that it won't be enough time to get that battery warm. Let's go ahead and unplug. When I checked the app, we had 275 miles, which there is a little odd thing that's happening. Sometimes I see it at 273, then I'll check the app later and it'll show 275. All right, we've jumped into the 2022 Model 3 standard with the LFP battery. Zero to 60 is 5.8 seconds, 272 miles of advertised range. Go ahead and pull up the battery. Well, there's our energy. This will give you a calculation in real world time based on the mileage. You can go 5, 15, and 30. You can also do instant range or average range. But let's pull up that battery. So we're at 272, 275 excuse me, on a full charge. Now one thing about the LFP is you won't ever see that trip anymore. And as soon as you put it past 90%, you're not going to get any errors. This battery is meant to charge up to 100%. This is probably about my 15th uh, charge up to 100%, and it's doing great. Heading out, I preconditioned the battery for about 15 minutes, but you can already see it just wasn't quite enough. We On the top corner here, we do still see the dots, so... We don't get full regen but i just want to show you real quick we get up to 20 and as soon as i let off the accelerator we definitely got regen that's all regen no break so at 100 percent on the lfp battery you'll definitely get uh good regen i'm gonna have to do a precondition for at least maybe an hour the next time to see really how long it takes to precondition the battery all right guys so we're in the 2022 model 3 standard the rear wheel drive with the LFP. Kind of want to do that first regen test like I showed you. This is day six of ownership. Now one thing weird is when I, I always charge to 100% every single time and it's been going up to about 275, 276 miles of range. But the lowest I've seen it is 272 and then it seems to recalibrate while it's sitting there plugged in because it will bump back up to 275 which is uh, pretty interesting. So far, the efficiency on this car is just amazing. If you look at my trip B here, 125 miles, 216 watt hours per mile. Now this drive was actually two drives. I drove from here to Lake Las Vegas and back, which was about 90 miles. And 95% of that, or about 90% was all freeway driving. And I was driving pretty aggressive as well. Uh, I was doing about 80 miles an hour on the freeway couple uh you know i wasn't trying to go slow by any means just driving my normal drive you know and on the vegas freeways it's pretty quick let's go ahead and put it into autopilot now i wanted to give you a quick update on the wireless charging pad and the usb c's and i'll pop it on the screen what tesla said but they pretty much said they are aware of the issue and that in the next month or two once they get the parts in uh, from all the shortages it's just really crazy all the parts shortages we're seeing right now. When I was in Long Beach just the other day, seeing all those tankers just floating, waiting to get into the port, I feel like it's a national emergency. Why aren't we getting more help out there to release that pressure? I feel that's causing a lot of inflation and it's almost, to me, feels a little bit artificial because, I mean, we need more help out there, right? Now, again, back on the efficiency, it is doing great. Got trip A. Trip A is from the whole, since they, since I've taken delivery, so it's highway, uh, city driving, mostly highway, because I'm always on the highway, but 224. But if you look at that last one on trip B, 216, this has to be the most efficient Model 3 that I've ever driven. Even my 2018 long range rear wheel drive, I was getting in the you know, mid 30s, low 40s with that one, and I thought that was good. This one is just amazing. Now this is the LFP battery. Don't let anyone confuse you. After November 1st, the only cars they'll be um, building. Now as far as shipping, there might be some logistics 
there where if maybe you got early November, you might have got the 2021 Standard Range Plus. But after November, they stopped producing the um, cars with the NCA battery with the, the 263 mile range. Now, in that time, in the last three months, they had the 263 2021 Standard Range Plus. Then they introduced the LFP, which was the 253 mile range. And the 0 to 60 was still 5.3. But after November 1st, it is the 2022 Model 3. It has the 272 mile range with the LFP battery. But they did increase the 0 to 60 to 5.8. They were trying to go for this balance between uh, performance and efficiency, and they nailed it perfect. This car is so efficient, it just blows my mind. Now, I do want to do a quick update on the headlights and the fog lights. I uh, went out for my first night drive last night, and the headlights definitely need to be adjusted. I got flashed about four times. My headlights must have been pointing straight up, right into the eyes of all the drivers. And uh, I actually pulled over in a parking lot, tried to adjust it myself a couple times. That was me turning off the uh, cruise control. But I tried to adjust it a few times. I went ahead and pulled it up in the service app and scheduled an appointment. They're going to come out December 1st and adjust the headlights. One thing I've been noticing uh, with service lately is the uh, mobile service has, the dates have got a lot better for sure. Now update on autopilot, we are on software. We still haven't got an update, again we're six days into uh, since ownership and we are on 35.102.2 so this is still the factory build. Usually takes, you know, in my experience, three to five weeks to get that first update. And the plan is, once I get that update, to get full self-driving subscription and try to do the uh, safety score beta and try to get the full self-driving beta. So do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, help me get to a thousand subscribers because it's really going to help me pay for my full self-driving subscription. And that is the goal is to provide more value to you guys and try to not hurt the wallet too much. Now coming soon in the future, I will be doing a supercharger test. I'm going to try to get it down as low as I can. And I'm not going to be doing a lot of supercharger tests like I did back in my 2018 Model 3. I don't want to hurt the battery. I don't know if it will, but I'm going to try to get it down and do a full, uh, you know, maybe 1% to 2% to 100%. And this time, I will finish it uh, to 100% for sure. I am going to be taking another road trip pretty, pretty soon as well. So probably to Laughlin, it's about 125 miles each way. And I'll do a little road trip video, show you the efficiency on the road. Let's go ahead and look at the fit. So right now, since the last charge, 2.8 miles, and we're at 254 watt hours per mile in the efficiency. Another test I do want to do is the zero to 60 road test. Um, I don't have any type of hardware to capture the time on the zero to 60, but I will kind of you know do a few videos on that, and we can do a quick one right here. Let's see, just kind of see what happens here. Can't wait to get that full self-driving beta. All right, so that's foot on the floor. So yeah, there we go. But I tell you what, the real fun about these electric cars is when you're just cruising, you know, that, that mid-range torque, that seat of the pants uh, push. Even on the freeway, I find myself in this model speeding, like going from uh, 65 to 85, 90. It, it is so quick definitely um, still very fast now I do want to read a few comments from uh, the viewers and again thank you so much for all the comments there's such great ideas down there and I'm so excited and I love Tesla so it, it, I love talking about the Tesla right all right, let's get back in autopilot so it says um, AA says can you check if you have the 980 motor or the 990 mo motor or something else now I did see someone commenting about pulling off the rear hubcap there and looking in at the nine o'clock position on the rear motor. I saw tons of tags on all the parts, but I cannot see the motor or the battery. So let me know if you know how to see which motor I got, it will definitely be helpful. Now, Matthew says, this, is this not the 2021 version? And that, and you are 100% correct. This is the 2022. It was on my purchase checklist. It's on my insurance. It, it, I, it's not on the Moroni sticker. I believe it shows the build date, but not the model year date. On the Moroni sticker, it does say just Model 3. It doesn't say Standard or Standard Range Plus or anything like that. 
Let's go ahead and turn right here. But this is definitely the uh, 2022 version. Absolutely. Don't let anyone fool you because you'll know when you get the 22 version because you're going to have to accept right before delivery. You're gonna ha It's going to have a pop-up saying, hey, you're getting the new car. It's going to have the decrease 0 to 60. It gives you enough information that you know you are getting the new model. That is for sure. Now, 70 says, cool, the standard range comes with such a great value now, excellent range, all the heats and the heated steering wheel. And let's just pull that up real quick. Definitely, I, every time I roll out, I've got my heated steering wheel on. Now, if I toggle on the heated steering heat, usually I'll, I'll turn on the heated uh, seats as well. But since I was pre-conditioning today, I didn't even uh, need to turn on my heated seat because it was so warm in here, right? But the heated steering wheel stays on all the time. And to me, it is a really good value. Yeah, we're missing the premium audio, but the value is great. Now, don't get me wrong. Tesla has raised the prices leading up to this model coming out. But if you locked in your order prior to taking delivery, you're going to get the new 22 LFP at a great price. Now, I paid $44,000 for it. I had to pay the $1,000 upcharge for the black paint before it went to $1,500, by the way. And uh, so I paid right at $45,000. And I needed a car, so there was no time to wait for that tax credit. You know what I'm saying? But I do agree, this is a great value. Now, Ronald says, I was wondering if I'll get the 22 uh, Model 3 since I ordered it last month. I won't be ready to finance until next year around March. Let's see how Auto Autopilot does in this little section. Very good. But he said he won't be able to take delivery until March, which is his estimated delivery as well. You're definitely going to get the 22 um, Model 3 with LFP. Now, one thing Tesla does, they change up their vehicle models just on the fly. So if they make another change before you take delivery, you'll probably get that car. But you will get the LFP battery, the 060 in 5.8 seconds, unless they change it, and the 2022 model, that is for sure. Now, G. Lou says, very informative video. I'm awaiting delivery in February for a blue Model 3. Congrats. And he was, had a question if the J1772 uh, adapter plug comes standard. And it sure does. Now, the only thing they took out, which I think was about a year, year and a half ago, or maybe even two years now, time flies, but they do not include the... Uh, the 14 the NEMA 1450 adapter anymore now when I got my first uh, stand my long-range 2018 model 3 it did come included and that's to plug into your level 2 charging there in the garage you know get that 30 miles per hour you I do they do sell a combo kit online now and also I think they sell it individually on Tesla and by the way, have you seen those Cybertruck socks? I ordered a couple for so stocking suckers, <laughs> stocking stuffers the other day. Pretty cool. Love those Cybertruck socks. So what do you guys think? The 2022 Model 3 LFP, it's still warming up the battery here, and we've gone on quite a bit of a drive. So let me, let me kind of give it a spirited drive. So like from 40 to 60, it is quick. And having a rear-wheel drive car definitely has its advantages now the all-wheel drive it is glued to the road and when you when you launch an all-wheel drive you have got performance we're actually here by the Tulu Springs uh, fossil bed out here there's a model Y sitting right there it's actually the performance model we're out here in Northwest Las Vegas look at those mountain views so far day six of ownership how many miles do I got on this car now? So I've got 260, and we'll, let's just do one more zero to 60 right here. And I'll just kind of count it out for you. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000, six 1,000. So it's right there, very close. And I like, one thing I, I love about the rear wheel drive is that motor is almost silent when you're cruising, and then you can hear it right there when I was getting on it. Nice uh, futuristic sound. This, it has to have the new motors. Uh, someone please chime in if you know what motor this is coming with because I read, I know the service advisors have been saying that you know ever since November 1st, we'll be having the LFP battery, the new model of the Model 3. And to me, this is the new iteration of the 2018 long range rear wheel drive. I mean, 272 miles when you're charging up to full it's really like a long range. And the efficiency on this car is better than any other one I've tested. I've only lost maybe like anywhere from six to 12 miles 
on these 80 or 90 mile an hour tri uh, mile trips I've taken. And that is very, you know, I'm talking about losing the miles from your estimated range to your actual range. So to give you an idea, right now we've gone 6.8 miles and we started at 275. So that puts us right at about 272 and a half. So at this moment, we've lost two and a half miles of estimated range, kind of just phantomly. But you can see, I did a couple zero to 60 there. So it does have an effect on it. Whoops, turned on autopilot and turned it right back off. I can't wait to get the full self-driving beta and do some videos for you guys. These Vegas streets, especially where I live out here, there's the line markings aren't that great. And I'm really excited to see how it does. It's gotta do, oop. Sometimes, I tell you, even on this, on this uh, factory build, I feel like the factory build isn't as good as the current version. I think we're like on 38.5 right now on our other Model Y. Can't wait to get that first update. I need to turn off this heat. It is hot in here. I totally forgot. It's 70 degrees outside and the heat in here was almost 80. Woo! So we are on the... Uh, just autopilot we have the full self-driving computer obviously but we don't have the uh, full self-driving subscription yet what I've noticed about this autopilot is it is ping-ponging a little more than I've uh, than I'm used to on the other autopilot builds but again I can't really compare this until we get on a fresh build that everyone's on versus a factory build and really you know put it through its paces now one thing is the autopilot will not stop at stop signs unless you have the full self-driving subscription. So that is a plus and a minus because if you're going through like a green light, you don't have to uh, you don't have to give confirmation that you're going through a green light, right? When you're just on autopilot. If you're on the full self-driving, you would have to actually give confirmation to go through the light. But at the same time, it's not gonna stop at any lights or any stop signs. So if you have it in autopilot and you're not paying attention, you'll blow right through the stop sign. It only happened to me once, and that's really all it takes. And I can't talk enough about this efficiency. The best efficiency I have seen. Anyone else with the 2022 Model 3 uh, standard, chime in. Let me know what your experience is as well. I just love to hear all the feedback. All right, we're back in autopilot. Let me double check to see what we have. So tire pressure, I've been seeing about 41 cold and it goes up to about 44, 45 PSI once they warm up, which to me is pretty good. On all my other Model 3s though, I've always had the tire pressure up to about 49, 50, just really trying to get that the highest efficiency possible. Since I've been driving in this vehicle with this new motor battery setup or whatever it is, oh my goodness, the efficiency is so good. I haven't even thought about raising up my tire pressure. I'm like, hey, well, I'll keep it a little bit softer. Now, one thing on the autopilot without full self-driving is if I put on the blinker, it's not gonna change lanes at all. It's not gonna stop at this light either. But here's a perfect example. On autopilot, you don't have to give it any confirmation to go right through the green light. So we're just cruising right through. If we had the full self-driving, it would make us hit the stock to give some type of confirmation. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for today, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.